If you'd like to learn how to make rubber stamps using your laser, then stick around because that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about making rubber stamps with your laser. Now you may ask, why in the world would I want to make rubber stamps? Well, it's a time saver. For years, or not years, but uh, almost a year, I've been making uh, various earrings on my CO2 uh, laser. And, you know, I wanted a way to display them uh, besides just throwing them in a little bag or something like that. Uh, or to hang them up and so I came up with the idea of making these little cards out of cardstock so I would print my little logo the blades and beam logo which is my Etsy shop on here a little thank you and then I take the card out to the laser and I think I could I fit like six of these cards on one eight half by eleven sheet of paper and I'd cut out the little holes uh, for the peg or for the earrings and then I'd cut the card out uh, itself that takes time. I don't remember if it's, you know, it's a couple minutes per um, each sheet. And as I came up with my latest earring design, I actually found myself, um, you know, kind of dreading having to go through this process again and making all these cards because no telling how many earrings I'm going to uh, make. And, you know, if it's one or two, that's fine. But if you start selling 20, 30, 50, 100, and you have to spend time making these things, well, that's a little bit of a drag. So, I thought I bet there's an easier way to do this. So number one, and I'll put links to all of this, you know, as I usually do. Good old Amazon to the rescue. Um, these are little earring cards and little bags to put them in. 150 of them, it's like seven, eight bucks. Okay, now I don't have to worry about cutting any of this stuff on my laser. I've got a, a ready to go package, but I lose that, you know, individual touch um, that I get there with my logo. So I thought, why not make a stamp? And it's just a matter of stamping the little card and spoiler alert here's the finished product i've got my stamp on there a little thank you looks nice and professional easy to go it even has the hole up here at the top so you don't lose that or you can without the bag uh the cards have a hole so very easy so let's get into talking about um the rubber stamp process itself so this is a little kit um, again, I'll link to this on Amazon. It comes with three different sheets. They're maybe eight by 10 and eight and a half by 11, um, sheets of rubber. I've got two of them here. The other one is, uh, fairly dirty. Also spoiler alert, engraving rubber on the laser, uh, does make a little bit of a mess. You're going to probably want to vacuum your laser when you're done. Um, but you get three sheets, uh, in this kit that I'll link you to, you get a black ink pad and a red ink pad uh, and then you get three uh, stamp holders you know they're just little wooden cutouts um, this one is about 30 just shy is about 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters this one's about 25 by 25 and this round one's about 30 millimeters uh, in diameter um, so it's a nice little kit, you know, it'll, it'll get you your start. You can see what you want to do. Of course you can make your own. You can, um, buy more of these if you want, but, uh, it's going to give you a, a whole lot of options. So what you're going to see in this video today is I'm going to share with you my journey. Um, and I will make these files available. I'll probably say that a number of times through this video, but, uh, I like to provide, you with the tools that you need um, to make this uh, a successful journey. So I started off, I made a test card, and uh, what I found out is that uh, the speeds and powers that I did on my first test card, probably a little too fast, not enough power for my 60 watt CO2 laser. So if you have a higher wattage laser, this test card might work for you. So I went back a second time, I made another test card, um, for my 60 watt laser and I was able to choose um, something that uh, would work for this particular sheet. Um, it may be different on the, uh, the red one versus the gray and I'm not entirely sure that these two gray ones are identical but that's why we do test cards, right? So that you're not wasting a whole lot of material. So now I uh, settled on 40 millimeters per second at a 40 percent power again that's for my 60 watt laser and i was able to make um this wonderful little stamp that i can now use to stamp these cards and 
make a nice professional product. So without any further ado, let's uh, go to the computer. I'll kind of show you the layout of everything, some tips and things like that that you're going to want to do because there are a few little um, tricks, especially if you're using Lightburn. Lightburn actually has some settings that will make uh, stamp making a little more successful. So I'll talk about those when we go to the computer. Then we'll go out to the laser and uh, I'll show you all of this stuff and then we'll come back and take a look at uh, the finished product. So here we are at the computer and obviously we have light burn up here. So I just want to go over this test card um, and you can see here our power settings are going to go from 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 and then speeds from 30 all the way up to 50 here. Um, now for stamps, you do need to um, basically reverse your image uh, in two ways. And I'll show you a little bit of that about that on the uh, stamp itself. Um, but and then we're going to use fill. So you can see all of these layers are set to fill. The powers are set accordingly. And then let me show you one thing. So looking at this layer here, you can see I've got 30 millimeters per second, 50 power, and then my min power is actually going to be 10. Now for my laser, uh, 10 is about the minimum that it will actually fire. And I'll, let me explain why we're doing that here. If you go to the advanced tab here, you're going to see this ramp length. Um, this is used for stamps. So if, if I hover right here, you can see that it says ramp length for rubber or for ramp sides used for stamps. Um, and then let me show you what this does. So you can set this. You may want to tweak it. I found that 0.75, so I believe that's 0.75 millimeters, so almost a millimeter of rank, ramp length. And so what's that? What that's going to do is instead of, you know, if, like that A. So instead of those sides being straight up and down like this, it's actually going to give a little bit of of extra length to the base, so that the top of the A up here where my fingertips are. You know, that's going to be there, but the base is going to be a little bit wider, which is going to give the stamp itself a little more uh, a rigid structure so that, um, you know, if it's straight up like this, when you're stamping it, that can kind of wobble around or not get ink or et cetera, et cetera. So this this gives the, the stamp a little bit of extra um, strength. So if we look here at what the... Um, you know, our preview, if I zoom in here, you can see this area here uh, along the edges of everything. Um, it, it gets a little fuzzy. There's a little bit of a gradient there. And so this is where the min power comes in. So obviously it's not cutting out the A here because that's going to be the top level of our stamp. But then as we get to the edges of the stamp, it's going to um, basically ramp up the, here it's you know lower power and then all the way up to our max so that we're cutting away the maximum amount so this is the area where you get that that little bit of ramp there so that's the test card again i'm going to make this one available i will also make uh, the high power one available that uh, i ran first that didn't quite come out so now let's take a look at the stamp itself so here we have um, our finished stamp now, a couple things that you'll note, and let me just, uh, for fun, let's say you wanted to make a, a stamp here that says pi, okay? So, a couple things you need to know. If I cut this out, or if I make this, and let's, uh, let's see, um, we'll choose a color that we haven't used here, uh, like this blue, it's set to fill. Now, if I were to just take this to the laser and send it um, or engrave it, it's going to be a reverse, right? Because it's going to engrave here in this section. So that will be a low point on my stamp. So if I want to make that actually a stamp, what I need to do is fill everything but that. So if I make a square, a circle, a star, whatever it is around that, and it's the same color, still set to fill, light burn is automatically going to reduce or re reverse that, right? So now all this blue area is going to get, you know, lowered. So we're going to have that lower level of our stamp. Um, and the, the letters 
aren't going to get touched. That's going to be the default thickness, you know, non engraved area of my stamp and everything around that is going to be lower. And that's how stamps work. One last thing that we need to remember. Um, so let me group, oops, you can see what happens when I make that mistake. We're going to group these together because remember we have text and then we have that square. So now we have this group together. If I make this into a stamp, I'm all proud of myself. Well, remember stamps are going to be upside down. So if I make that my stamp, when I go to stamp it, I'm going to have I and a backward H um, because stamps are backwards. So I need to go to arrange and then flip horizontal. Now I have a high stamp. I could take that uh, to the laser and engrave it. And again, remember the stamp itself, if I have this set, um, I want, you know, if 40 millimeters per second, which is what I found uh, from my test card, 40 millimeters per second, max power of 40, I want to have that min power of 10, and then I need to go over here to advance and set that ramp length. Now, if I were to look at this guy again, you can see I've got that ramp length uh, in effect here. So now that you know how Lightburn is set up, um, you can create your stamp, create your files. Next thing we're going to do is go out to the laser and we're going to engrave our test card and our stamps. Okay, so here we go. We are done with our test card. Uh, definitely looks like uh, low speed and high power are going to be the winner. I'm gonna... Okay, now we are doing a second test card. Um, the first one, the results are pretty good, but it's definitely not deep enough for a stamp. So we're going to give this a, another shot with some uh, slower speeds, about the same power levels, uh, but much slower speeds so that we can get a, a better representation of what we need. Here are the two test cards that we did, and I know it's a little hard to read here, um, but we went from uh, on the first one, which I'm going to make available, I'd say this is good for probably your higher power, you know, 100, 130 watt lasers, 25%, um, 30, 35, 40, 45, with speeds from 150, 200, 250 to 300, all the way up to 350. You can see this is fairly shallow, so that's not going to be good for stamp making because you'll get um, since it's not terribly deep you'll end up getting ink on this back part here uh, and that's going to come through so i did the second test card which i'm also going to make available this one's uh, for my 60 watt machine and it goes from power of 30 35 40 45 up to 50 and speeds from 30 35 40 45 and 50 so Highest speed is 50 millimeters per second at 50% power, all the way down to 30 uh, millimeters uh, or 30 millimeters per second at 30 power, 30% 30 power. Now, what I found is um, pretty much these rows here at 30% uh, um, at all these power levels. If I shine a light through this, it's almost gone all the way through all of the rubber. So that's not good. Um, you, you do need a little bit of backing there because you need to be able to stick your stamp to something. So you can see here I've circled 40% power, 40 millimeters per second. That was kind of the sweet spot. I've got still a good amount of rubber on back, so I'm going to have a, a pretty sturdy stamp, but uh, the engraving is deep enough that uh, I'm not going to have to worry about picking up ink on the background. So 40 millimeters per second, 40% power is what I'm going with for my 60 watt laser. Okay, so we are now cutting the stamp. We settled at 40 millimeters per second at 40% power, and it is cutting just fine. So we'll see what it looks like when it's all done. Now we'll take a look at the stamps that I made. So this was my first design. Uh, this is what I used to print out on the cards and then cut out. Um, when I tested this, it was just a little bit too fine. The text and some of the this design here when it uh, cut out this little section of this filigree, actually, um, it's so thin that uh, it's 
cut too far, so that would be a broken spot uh, in the stamp. This is actually a, um, a shot of how that ended up stamping. So you can see it's, it's not a great stamp. So what I did is I just did a, a quick redesign, and this is not uncommon. You know, stamps, you, there's only so much resolution that you can get out of the rubber based on um, the, the lens you're using, all that kind of stuff. So I went with a little bit thicker letters. I also used uh, that ramp feature, um, which makes the base of the letter a little bit wider. So it's going to give uh, some added support. So this is what I ended up with. And then I just made a little thank you uh, stamp as well. So the next step is going to actually uh, to put this on the, uh, the wooden stamp that came with the kit. And then we'll test it out. So here we have uh, our little wooden, uh, wooden stamp. And then the back side of this is uh, sticky. So I'm actually going to turn this this way. It's square, but... Just going to press that down here onto our stamp. Give that a good press. And now we can take our ink pad. And I did, um, I just used some uh, Dawn dish soap and a toothbrush to uh, clean this up because, uh, as you'll see on my laser, um, and I had some video of that, uh, it does make quite a mess. So you do want to clean these up, uh, before you use them. So I'm there we go. Now we have a stamp. So not bad at all. Pretty happy with the results. All right, everybody. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this journey of learning how to make rubber stamps on your laser and you gained a little bit of knowledge, got some free files, um, learned out a little time-saving tips. Um, maybe you'll find these links useful. If you've got um, some other products that you found great for making uh, stamps, please drop them in the comments, whether that be you know packaging, time-saving tips, um, some other uh, you know rubber uh, products or kits or anything like that that you think are you know the cat's meow um, please share those with the community because uh, it, it always helps when we're learning and burning and growing together so as always if you like what I'm doing here on the channel please take a moment hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit that little bell so you know when I drop new videos I'm looking forward to doing more projects um, you know it's not just product reviews out here although I am getting I'm getting noticed a little bit more, so you will probably see. Um, I always try and uh, decide whether or not uh, when somebody hits me up and asks me to review a product, um, I've been asked to review toupees, um, hidden cameras. You know, If I don't think that it's going to benefit my audience, then I don't accept those reviews. But uh, you know, if it's something that I think, whether that be for a potential vid video maker uh, like myself or 3D printing or the laser world, um, or CNC, then those are the kind of things that I'm going to uh, review. And just being provided with a product doesn't impact my review whatsoever. Um, I look at it as, you know, these are things that I may not be personally able to afford, or, you know, I'm not just going to spend $80 to review something sight unseen, hoping that it's good. Um, but if there's a company that's willing to give me that product, then I can take an honest look at it and I can share that with you and then you at least have something uh, out there to base your decision on and you're not going in blind. So that's just my little uh, philosophy on reviews. But um, as always, I'm excited to uh, continue to, to grow the channel with all of you. So let's just keep on learning and burning together. Take care, everyone.